Today is a good day. I'm here with Rob Philo Cabrera. He is the man who teaches me how to do all kinds of cool stuff with blades. He is a blade maker, knife maker, and we are here at the shop. Tell us, what's the shop? Tell us what's here. Tell us about yourself, whatever you want to say. Roger that. Uh, I'm Rob Cabrera. Everybody knows that. Thanks for the intro. Appreciate yep, it. Yep. Uh, welcome to the Chop Shop. So this is the home base for all knife making that's I'm involved with, right. which would mean Double Star Blades, Philo Blade Works, which is my own personal brand. And this is where it all happens. This is where all the R&D happens. This is where all the development happens. This is where the making happens. This is where it all Shipping, goes down. Everything. Shipping, martial arts. You've been here. You've <laughs> yeah. rolled on the mat with me. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I've kind of made this my zen. I had the benefit and the blessing of getting this facility after Double Star rolled out. This was one of the original buildings that they came out of. This is JNT One, um, and we renamed it the Chop Shop because we just demo and break a lot of crap here. And right, I've made and this do. my zen, man. This is what I. This is house. This is home. This is where I'm at most of the time. So Double Star is uh, a, a larger organization. They mm -hmm. make rifles too. I think yep. we're going to meet up with Nick and talk to yep. him about that. And you're all blades, all knife. All blades, all of it. Yep. So I think we can go in here and take a look, mm -hmm. show us around, see what Absolutely. we've got. Absolutely. My pleasure. Let's My go inside. Pleasure. Let's, do, Let's it. do it. Well, this stuff looks pretty cool. This looks like a knife maker's home right here. Yeah, this is, uh, I call it another place of zen for me. Right. You know, when the business side of it gets crazy, this is where I'll disappear to, right here. That brings me to a good question there. Sure. How'd you get started making knives? Uh, what got you here? Yeah, to kind of keep it short, um, the, the, the pivotal point in time where it all changed up like everybody else I ran around as a kid grinding up files and all that yeah right fine whatever but uh, when my career tanked in 2008 I was a land surveyor for 22 years and when that tanked um, I had took a four or five dollar cut in pay just to make a living and I had to find something else to supplement to keep the you know the wife and the kids taken care of sure and uh, knife making is what did that and what happened was because you were already doing that on your own I was I was playing kinda... around with it okay but what happened was was I got tied up with the right people you know okay. I got mentored by yeah. some people some folks who saw my skills and who would that be Can you... uh, Ryan Johnson of RMJ Tactical John Hutchison who was the guy who taught me heat treating and John Graham of Graham Knives of, of course there were other people who followed behind that sure but sure. those were the initial three those were my trinity so to speak okay um and those three are the ones that gave me all the courage to do it and then Jesse Starnes of, of and you took that big lead yeah yeah, yeah. and Jesse Starnes of Double Star he uh early on I mean he was right there like one of the first people who ever bought any of my pieces at all and these guys all of them were like do dude it. you can do this Right. You can do this. You know, you got the skill sets. You got what you need. Just do it. And, and here I am now, you know, fighting nice. the good fight and just hammering away, grinding away, staying in the grind. <laughs> no pun intended. Now you mentioned, though, that the business side of it is important, right? Yeah. But that sucks, right? Or no? It's, it's just part of it. Yeah. It's part of it. Good you know, I like I, it. Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an artisan. So for me, the passion is about what I'm doing. And that's a hard thing to convey hard thing to convey how much I'm into what I do believe it or not there are days on the business side of it where I'm like okay I'd like to put my hands around somebody's neck but mm -hmm. I come back here and I and it, making work. stuff makes me remember why I'm doing it you right know? I'm Philo right but always you, am always will be uh, by the way made, my wife gave me that name oh yeah okay yeah, yeah nice and is, what does that mean is that a have a particular meaning or it's is that Spanish for the, it represents a lot of things, but in Spanish, it represents the sharp edge of the blade. Oh, nice, yeah. And so okay. she she called me that when I was get, just getting started. Yeah. Yeah. And you make just one or two blades, right? No, <laughs> not really. I wish. Uh, I wish a lot of this. Hey, I've spent a lot of time in this place, and I've seen what yeah. he makes, so that's kind of. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes I think i got way too many SKUs. Yeah. But I probably don't have enough compared to some other people. Right. But, um, yeah, I do. I, I actually cut my teeth on Karambit's. That's really yeah. one of my first passions is karambits. You probably should say the reason I got to know you even more was martial arts training. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, I'll go ahead and kick off with you. You're a judo guy, and I had a gap that I needed to fill. Um, I looked for you, and then, you know, we met up, and I'm a Kali guy. I've been for a long, long time, you know, stand-up fighter. And, you know, that's it for me. The blade, the hand to hand, man, I'm, I'm, well, we've trained together. I mean, yeah. we, we know exactly what it's all about. And yeah. that's a part of me. Nobody really sees. Right. They don't understand that part that you know, we, I mean, we know this cause we roll, right. but most people don't understand that. I, man, I, I love to tussle. I right. love to fight. I love to, I love to, you know, turn it up. 
And that's one of the things I try to bring to you guys is that I bring people that aren't just making stuff for the yeah. sake of making and selling stuff. I bring guys like Rob to you that are making and utilizing and training and getting dirty and bloody and sweaty yeah. with the stuff that they build and make. So yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Let's let's take a look around and see what you got here. Sure. Sound good? Let's have a walk. Yeah. Let's have a walk. And it's not just knives, right, bro? Nope. Nah, that's uh, that's actually the second piece that we cut out uh, for Double Star, designed by Fila Blade Works. Uh, this is their entry into the breaching world, which was the Wrath. Uh, when, when I produced these, it was called the Lobo. Hey, talk about that for a second before What's you that? get going. You talk about that being a breaching tool, which I really like, because yeah. a lot of people look at this as it's just an axe. It's not just an axe. No. Tell us what you have there. So in this, in this, I owe to Ryan Johnson. This is not something that I came up with on my own. I basically got plugged into his ethos, and he set this mindset. It's a tool, you know, this idea that um, there's a lot of romanticization going on with these tomahawks now, but the bottom line is, is this is a tool. It's meant to clear things, get things out of your way, um, whether they be metal, wood, aluminum, doesn't matter. But this is a breaching tool. This is for getting in and out of stuff when you need to. Uh, if it does anything else thereafter, that's just a bonus. Right. Whether you're chopping wood with it or whittling or making a fire starter or however, doesn't really sure. matter. It's this whole idea of taking control of the situation that you're in at that point in time to help weigh the odds out. And you cut the top of a car off with it, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Which was a lot of work, brother. I think that's a, a point that I, I like to get across with Tomahawks because yeah. we talk about it, the romanticization of yeah. it all romanticism whatever yes they're just tools yep. you can use them for whatever right yep i get okay. and i get a lot of flack yeah. from like a lot of the martial arts guys yeah. because there's this thing now i mean hell i teach tomahawk i mean sure. i teach it but the bottom line is is that and, and again now the whole idea that it's a tool was really pushed on me and you know this because you spent some time with some tier one guys they, they said they sat me down like right away and they're like dude i don't i don't know what folks have told you about this but the reality is this Right. It's a timed event sure. that we do, you know. So I like to be, I like truth. Sure. You know, I like to yeah. keep honest. And I think the honesty That's is. That's why I've got you here today. Yes. <laughs> I like honesty and being squared away with the consumers, too. You know, listen, yeah, it's all fun games to talk about stuff like that, but the reality is this is a tool. That's it. And I built it to be a tool. Right. Two more spots I want to look at. I want to go look at the bench over here and you tell us about it. And I want to go in the other room. Sure. Tell us what's there. Yeah. Sound absolutely. Good? Let's sure. Go over there. Let's do that. Yep. Rob, it looks like. Got a long bench of good stuff right here. Yeah, this is the magic, brother. So over here is the stropping station, right? And wh what do you do there? So generally what will happen is during sharpening, it goes through, th some of them go through three stages, right? And then usually the last stage is somewhere around an 800 grit. After the 800 grit, we go to a strop. Everything gets stropped, everything. Even the harder ones like the karambits and the dracon, they all get stropped, everybody. And then after it gets stropped, it gets carded, and it runs over here to this area for it to get assembled. Okay, awesome. And this big marble piece right yeah, here Yeah, this guy me. here, this is the measuring station. This is where, really, this comes more into play on the phyllo side for uh, measuring thicknesses, uh, setting primaries, things like that. More what of the custom. What's a setting primary? What so you what mean? you'll do is, is you'll, set your pri you'll set your thickness of the blade, get all that trued up. Then you'll bring it over to here, you'll dike them the blade, and then you set your primary thickness, which is usually 20,000. So in other words, the very thickness of where the cutting section is. Oh, okay. That you'll set your primaries, and that's where we use a height gauge to do that. So we'll, we'll go ahead and set up there because we've got a nice flat surface. Set the height gauge, and that's how we mark where the actual primary thicknesses are going to go. Again, this is more of a, a custom knife making or a limited run kind of thing. Right. And this last little gadget here. Yeah. Okay, so when in production knife making, the question always comes... When is sharp, sharp? You know, you get guys that, you know, they look like they got mange from che <laughs> checking themselves. Uh, I kind of got tired of doing that. So we went online and, my, yeah. Because you didn't have any hair on You know, my wife literally <laughs> said, you got look like I got mange. You got some mange. So I got I to stop doing that. When you're doing two or three hundred knives at a time, or yeah. you just say 50 knives at a time, you kind of start running out of places to <laughs> test the knives. <laughs> so we got online. We found the best system. And I love the best system. It makes my life so much -E -S -S, easier. BESS, I noticed, not best, but yeah, best. Best. The best, okay. best system. They've actually set their own gauge. Uh, no, you cannot use fishing line to do this. It's actually a special, from what I understand, it's a glass infused cord. 
And you actually cut. Yeah, and you actually cut it, and it, it gives you a number, and it gives you a scale. And the scale is rated on beginning with razor blades and higher. Nice. Production razor blades, and it scales it all the way up. That way you can make sure that yeah. all of them are the same. Yep, everybody's the same. Like uh, like my custom stuff, I'm usually scoring at about a 150 to real close to razor blade stuff. Production, we're at between a 250 and a 350, which right. is just quality, high-end manufactured cutlery. That's right. the way that works, yeah. So let's go into the other room because I want to see. That's where we make the handles and stuff, That's right? where we do handling and we do kydex. Okay, let's check that out. All right, let's do that. So what is this big apparatus right here? Yeah, this is our uh, CNC router. This is uh, where we're able to generate and reproduce cool looking stuff and do it regularly. Stuff like kydex uh, or handles? Or, yeah, okay. scales, handles, kydex, sheathing, sheathing setups. Am I using that word wrong? Is it scales or handles? Um, What's a scale? Most of us, a scale is the, the apparatus that you use to assemble a handle. Okay. The actual two sides of your G10 or your wood, we call them scales. But, okay. yeah, it's your handle assembly. Right. Uh, and this is where we're able to do that. We're able to come up with ideas and reproduce it. For a double star, the main thing that this is used for is mass production of kydex. Okay. That's it, to where I can generate hundreds of units of kydex. Just, Quickly. Yeah. yeah and you did... Uh... You did all the setup. You did all the CAD yep, design. Yep, all the CAD, all the designing. All of it. Yep, and then what I did, they were nice enough to give me a, ha a helper half the time, and he, I basically, he already had machining experience, so I said, listen, this is how I'm doing it. Don't be afraid to give me input. Let's do it better right. every time. Sure. So, but now we've got to where we can produce hundreds of units, just rotate them right out without a problem. But it was processes that I came up with that got us to where we're at. And there, you know, again, I hate to take credit for it in that way. Yeah, but no. it took a lot of hard work, sure. a lot, a lot of, yeah, lot a lot of, of sweat work. equity. Yeah. Right. And this big honking thing over here, you know, what is that, that is the simplest thing that we've got in this room. But by far, that machine makes production kydex possible. That's press? or Yes, what? Yeah. that is a 24-ton clicker press. And, I, and again, I'm not going to take credit for that. The whole, the whole idea of using that in kydex production or anything came from Ryan Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, he had told me at some time earlier, he said, brother, I'm using this. This thing's amazing for generating primitives. So you I said, one. tell me about it. Well, no, he cut me a tremendous deal Oh, on that one. <laughs> oh, okay. He said, I got one if you want to come get it. I said, I'll be right down. Nice. So down to Chattanooga we went, down to RMJ, and they did. They gave me a horrendous deal on this, and here it is. And, it's, and it makes what I do possible. Really. Right. I mean, because it overflows into Philo as well. Because, like, right now I'm getting into making trainers and things like that. Well, I can make production Kydex for those trainers and just Boom. just nice. roll them out. Roll when you say out. trainers, I mean, I know, but just for everybody else. You make training tools so that we can, because yeah. I do this with you. Yep. We use training tools so we can actually stab and cut and slice and dice and, yep. Yep. and not actually cut each other. Yeah, yeah. Which, and, it's, it's, and what's that material that you're using? Well, I use two types. I use aluminum. For the stuff that we really, mm -hmm. you know, that you want to try working a lot of your strips and stuff, but the one that I'm really starting to like is uh, HDPE, uh, okay. which is basically a plastic, a right. heavy plastic, sure. but it's really tough. Right. Um, and it's nice because you don't really have to worry about hurting your training partner. Right. They can take some licks. It Although feels your stabs really good. with those things still hurt. Yeah, just they so still. You, know. you can feel them. Yeah, you can feel them. <laughs> but I don't have to worry. We got to worry about going down to Winchester to the hospital. You know. I've come home and Jennifer's like. Uh, you've been Black training with Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got a little bruise. Okay, yeah. let's move on over here and see what we have. Uh, sure. And what's this part right here, my friend? Well, this is uh, this is the vacuum molding station. This is where we vacuum mold. This is just a, a heat press that we use, and we've got some special settings that we've got and changed the kind of the configuration of it to be able to do kydex. Um, and we use that to heat the kydex or the thermoplastic. To be able to form it, we make all of our own molds here. Anything that's too obscure, I send it down to the big machine shop and just mold it out of aluminum. I mean, mold, yeah, cut it out of aluminum, and then we use it to. When mold you say kydex. the big machine shop, that's at Double Star. That was you'll be visiting yeah. there. Yeah, those yeah. guys. Uh, for me, when it comes to my more complex fixturing and stuff like that, they're invaluable. Uh, Tom Bogaski down there in that machine shop, he works hand in hand with me. We speak the same language. Gotcha. And he's able to help me get a lot of stuff done on both sides of the ball, not just double star, but also Philo as well. Okay, nice. Well, let's head back into the big shop and we'll finish her up. Yeah, let's do it. Sounds good. Everybody's got a patch wall. 
Yep, That's one of the bunch right there. right there, son. That's right. That's right. That's right. So these are all folks that you've probably done work with or yeah. some of that nature? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very proud. Good it stuff. took me a long time to do this. Yeah. Because I didn't want it to be cliche. I wanted to have stuff that I wanted to put out. Um, for me, I don't know. It's just uh, I get to look up and see a lot of people that I enjoy doing business with. Right. For me, that's that's you know a big deal for me as far as these patches go. Sure. You know. Dude. Always appreciate pleasure, you, brother. brother. Thank you very I much. I really appreciate everything you do with me and taking everybody that follows us on a yeah. tour. What you do, check out Double Star Blades. Check out Fido Blade Works. Going to be a real big. When's it coming out? Rebranding the the whole brand. Fourth of July. Fourth of July. So check that out, and we appreciate you as always. Come on, join in. Let's learn together. All right.